Hello? I sound weird because it's my headphone, which sucks. Anyhow, uh, I was... I want to talk about um, magnet structures, and in this case about Diptyque. Diptyque is a French planar magnetic company uh, that makes uh, very nice looking speakers, as you can see. First off, uh, the tweeter. The tweeter is a bit weird because it's it's kind of tall, but it's also not tall. So it's not a point source. It's not a line source. It's in between. This will beam like crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. So you better sit in the middle of it or you're fucked. Maybe that's the reason why you can like swivel them. Who knows? But it, it will definitely, it, it only takes a few centimeters to create a dip and peak. Anyhow, that was not what I was uh, making a video about. It was about the magnet structure. So in their older designs, so actually all of their designs, except for the reference one, which I'll cover in another video because I need to try that to make sure what's happening. But their other, uh, their other design, they call it bipolar push-pull, which is... But anyhow, this is their um, drawing about how their magnetic structure works. So normally um, you have... Um, so this is, well, I assume it's metal, but that's, we'll leave it for now. This is a substrate <laughs> and the magnet is sitting on this substrate. And normally, uh, let's say the north is facing the metal slash substrate and then the south is facing the coil. In this case, you can see the coil is actually on top of the magnet. Normally it would be in between the magnets because the next magnet will be reversed north on the substrate south towards the coil i'm not sure what i said in the beginning but at least it's reversed and then a magnetic field will be here and so that's why the coil usually sits there now in in their case they have a push pull configuration but they also flip the magnets 90 degrees so instead of magnets being on top of each other, like, let me show it in FEM real quick. Like this, magnet, magnet, and north facing the other north. That's usually the thing. And then here's the coil, we're here, we're here, but in between the magnets. Here it's on top of at least one magnet at all time. So that's a very weird design because if this would be steel, which I assume it's not, if, if it is, then that's a ridiculous choice. And, uh, well, we're going to use FEM to see why that is. And, yeah, what else happens? So this is the design of Diptyque. Let's go to the Diptyque design. So, here it is. It's the same as in the picture, but then in FEM. Now I am going to uh, model this and then I'm going to draw a line between these dots uh, where the membrane would sit normally and we'll see the magnetic field moving like from, from one side to the other side. So normally it's in between magnets. So let's say the field walks from here to there and then here it does the opposite. And that's okay because the coil is going in the opposite way and then everything will move in the same direction. Here it is, is of course the same, except it is on top of one of those magnets. That's weird. Anyhow, we're going to model it and see what, what happens. This takes pretty long. We add some coloring. Might remove these so it goes faster. So this is how it looks if it has a metal piece where the magnets are sitting on. And I don't know this, so but I'll just show you what happens if you do. So this red line will resemble the membrane where the coil is sitting on. In this case, it should be here and here and here. Well, let's see what it does. Boop. So we got 0 0.2 Tesla, slightly above. Okay, 
fine and dandy. Um, so what if we don't have metal? Then it looks like this. So there is quite some stray magnetic field here and here where there is no membrane. So it's kind of, it's wasted. That's too bad, but... If you look at uh, Tesla, uh, at least the amount of magnetic force there, it's quite, it's higher, 2.8. This was with metal, this was without. Hmm, and uh, I can show you why, because it just shorts out. It shorts out the magnet and then you lost, well, quite a bit of your magnetic field. So, whoop, I don't know if they use metal. I assume they do not. If so, that's a dumb, dumb idea. But it wasn't very clear. At least if I look at this, I assume it's metal. Could be aluminium. Who knows? Uh, anyhow, I did see this cross design before. So I'm not sure. They say it's patent pending, but... I don't see a patent up yet, and I believe I seen it like from a very old design. So it might have been that it like expired and they just claimed it now, or try to claim it. I don't know, or they came up with with it themselves, and uh, I just see this design could be. Who knows? Anyhow, uh, so yeah, this is what you get. A bit narrow. You can widen this a little bit by um, moving the magnets a little bit further apart because it's quite peaky. Uh, well, I'll show you what happens if you use a normal push-pull arrangement. It costs you one magnet more. And I'll use metal in this case because it is beneficial. Zero point five. So you have quite a lot of well yeah much more force but there was one thing that well that I noticed and you probably did as well this is indeed much stronger this one has far more humps and bumps so there are more places to put coil so here it is wider, so that's one benefit. Uh, you can put more traces in this part, like in a few centimeters. I don't know how many it is, but five or something compared to this. That's only like two or maybe three. But the question arises here. You can put a few traces here, a few traces there, a few traces there, a few traces there. So there is, it's, the magnetic field is flipping around pretty often. So the dis distribution of traces might be, and I'm not sure yet, might be better on this one, but the efficiency will be much lower. This is almost twice the efficiency in the gap that gives you uh, six dB, but then again, you only have one, two, three, four, five, and then like two half ones. Here you got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I'm not too sure. <laughs> it is weaker, but you got almost double the amount of gaps that are less wide and less intense. So I don't know, I, I cannot like phantom what, what is better. I mean, here you can put like half the traces in and it's half the amount of Tesla. So that might not be really good for efficiency compared to this one where the Tesla is like twice as high. So you gain 60 B and you can almost put like twice as much traces in there. My guess is that this one is more efficient But we'll have to check that. Uh, what what might be interesting, at least to me, is that the traces here 
it doesn't leave much of uh, empty space in between magnets, which might perform a little bit better up high. Uh, and you might lose out on some efficiency. So it depends on what you want to make or yeah, what it is you're making. Uh, it might still be kind of interesting at least to test. It would be very interesting to test this compared to a regular push-pull. Here you can see in the normal push-pull, all the magnetics are contained within within the driver and it, you know, it's exactly where you want it to be at the foil. That's the difference, kind of. Because here you don't use metal. It's you got some magnetic field here that you're not using. And on this side as well. So that's a bummer. And if you put metal on there, it is contained, but it's especially contained inside the magnet, as you can see. They're completely purple, so there the magnetic field is really strong, except that you cannot use it for your foil if you contain it in the magnet itself. <clears throat> so, I don't know. I, I, I think the diptyque design is not very efficient. I don't know how linear it is. I mean, they call it push-pull and, you know. Uh, but what triggers me as in interesting is the amount of times it turns. So you have more spots where you could put traces. Uh, it will not make up for the loss, I think. But it might come close. And then you have a more even-driven mylar. But then again, there's always a magnet behind the traces that would you know, could like look like shit in a uh, frequency response. Who knows? I I've never, I've never built something like this. So that might be interesting. And then you got the new reference model that is completely weird because the well, that's gonna be another video because that I'm, I really have no clue if that works. I have some ideas about it, what the idea behind the whole thing is, is but. If it works, I cannot model that in FEM. So I have to make one to see what it does. Anyhow, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, nice speaker, weird Twitter design. Uh, and I would like to know more about it. And I would like to know if this, this stuff here is metal, where there might be something else behind this perforated piece of sheet metal or aluminium whatever it is that holds the magnets could well be uh yeah i have no clue see you later bye bye